determined love modifies a two-time winner down here a 10-time winner on the nascar wheel of modified tour and one of his most coveted races and victories of his career was certainly the four times he actually won the turkey derby at wall stadium in new jersey but he was a fixture in the modifieds for so long and tonight we remember him he lost his life several years ago at thompson speedway in connecticut and his history continues down here with this race in honor of him. To speak more about his significance and this race here tonight, we go down to our pit reporter, Rob Blount. Rob? Yeah, thanks, guys. I'm down here with Jimmy Blewett. And as, um, you know, just a few minutes before we were expecting to see him go after qualifying, we got word that Jimmy wouldn't be racing tonight. Jimmy, what exactly happened to sideline you for tonight's race? Well, we got here and they initially pumped the engine in our car and pumped uh, 12 2. It was supposed to be 12 0. So, in place of that, they wanted us to uh, space the spark plugs out on the engine. And uh, when we did do that, the spacers that we used for it we were leaking on one cylinder and uh, ended up causing damage to the engine. So, we weren't able to make it out for qualifying. And, and uh, basically, right now, we're over in Tommy Baldwin's pit and he loaned us his engine. I thank him and his guys for that. And, uh, we can get this thing back together for tomorrow and finish out the week strong. I know you have to miss tonight's race, but how much does this race mean to you? It's basically the whole, whole reason why I came down here was to race this race, so uh, definitely uh, disappointing to me, but uh, I got a true friend in Tommy Baldwin and his family. We've always been great friends, you know, and to our family. And uh, just like I said, I appreciate him loading us the engine. Hopefully we can do him proud with it tomorrow night. I just wish everybody out here luck tonight. I want them to all have a good, safe race, and... Uh, May the best man win. Guys, it's Jimmy Fluid. Disappointed he can't race in his brother's race tonight, but he'll be back here tomorrow on Friday night. Jimmy, John, and, and uh, John, the dad, uh, just good people. Um, they've been around modified racing for a really long time, and I know I've been a personal friend of Jimmy's for a long time. I, I know this is, this is really hurting him to not be out here tonight, but what a great gesture by Tommy Baldwin to loan him a, an engine so he can come back to racing tomorrow night. Here's the starting lineup for tonight's 76-lap race uh, here at New Smyrna Speedway. Timmy Salamito on the front row for this one with Ron Silk. Car is getting a little heat in the tires as we go through the lineup. Kyle Ebersaw, a second-place run on Monday night, starts third. Ryan Priest, three-time and defending champion here at New Smyrna for the World Series, starts four. Ronnie Williams in the number two for Bertuccio's team. He's a winner at the SK Modified ranks at Stafford Motor Speedway. He will line up fifth. Patrick Emerling, the former Race of Champions Modified Series champion in sixth. In the seventh spot, second quick in qualifying tonight. First in points by ways of fourth and second place finishes in the features this week is Matt Hirschman and Chuck Hosfeld for the sixth time in 10 Blewett Memorial races. He's your fast qualifier. Tommy Catalano for the first time here during the 2018 edition of the World Series makes an appearance. Uh, he was staying back home to make sure he takes care of his schooling and then flew down, actually got delayed in Charlotte and uh, really didn't have much time here today at New Smyrna Speedway prior to qualifying. Tyler Ripkema on the outside of the fifth row. Two to go signal given. Danny Bone starting in the 17 car on the inside of row six. A couple of great feature runs for him, but he started so far back the first couple of nights and Craig Lutz top 10 in the NASCAR modified touring series last year starts outside. Eric Goodale has won two times in the John Blue at the third memorial. He's actually won two of the last three. He will line up 13th. 14th will be the former Race of Champions modified series winner Jimmy Zacharias. Teenage driver Calvin Carroll starts on the inside of row number eight and Austin Pickens of Floridian starts outside. Last year's Southern Modified Racing Series champion Jeremy Gerstner in the 75 is 17th Mike Willis Jr. in 18th is Amy Catalano. We have a lot of Catalanos in the field. Kyle Trainer rounding out the top 20. Timmy Catalano as well as Jeffrey Gallup, Nikki Carroll, John Gerstner, Jimmy Blewett was scheduled to start. Couldn't make the call. Matt Montaneri, Chris Young, and Jimmy DeGrassia also in our starting lineup. So here we go. Off of turn number four, by the grace of God and 600 horsepower, we are racing in the John Blewett the third Memorial at New Smyrna Speedway. 76 laps the distance tonight underway and rolling to turn three. Timmy Salamito, the leader, 
Single file behind him was Silk, who's won a number of these Blewett races. Wheel to wheel for third. Salamino trying to go to victory lane here at New Smyrna Speedway. That family has so much history in the Northeast in modified racing. His dad, Jerry, a winner at Islip Speedway and the Mini Modifieds and also at Riverhead Raceway. Ron Silk, the former NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour champion. This, so far, is his best run during Speed Weeks in 2018. And something we haven't seen much this week, just out of the screen and now on the screen, the six of Ryan Priest getting past. There comes Emerling. He's been strong. Two top fives this week for Patrick Emerling. Emerling's got a good person at his helm throughout the year and certainly down here as well. Former modified standout back of the day, Jan Leedy is his crew chief. Look at Ronnie Williams go way up the racetrack. A little slip up down there going into turn number three. And that allows Chuck Hosfeld to get right to his back bumper. And I think some of that, he thought the five of Eversol was going to make some contact to the inside. Both of those drivers have had some pretty good runs here this week. Ronnie Williams is a talented young race car driver. Uh, you know, he won races in the SK Light Division at Stafford and then went to the SKs and won there as well. Now having this opportunity, he tells me he'll run the entire tour this year for that Berducci-owned team. So in a 76-lap race, how much do you save early? You got to save a little bit for sure. Uh, we know that these tires could go away. Uh, new Smyrna Speedway with each year gets a little bit more abrasive after, after they put down that new pavement years ago. Look at this. The six car, Ryan Priest, last night's winner to the inside of Emerling, really drives it into the corner hard. Well, Emerling made the pass earlier, but Priest takes it back. That car is up to speed now. He's back into the third spot as he sets his sights on the lead duo. Here's the interesting thing coming into this. Ryan Priest is way back there in the point standing. So by virtue of the misfortune, uh, while running up front on the opening light, uh, an opening night, he had trouble with the rear end on that machine, and because of that, he finished at the tail end, and that's going to hurt him in the title chase, but you never know. we still got a few nights to go. Lower left of the screen, your leader, Timmy Salamito, holding off Ron Silk in the 33, right behind them, the 07 of Emerling, and the 2 of Ronnie Williams. That's top five right there for those drivers, as Williams Takes a little different line, high in, low off, gets him a good run, pulls up beside Emerling. He's a student of the game, and he's learning down here. He said, man, uh, this is unlike anything he's ever raised. I said, isn't it similar to Thompson Speedway in Connecticut? He said, absolutely not. Here you really feel even more of a sensation of speed because the corners are still pretty quick. At Thompson, you go way up the racetrack and almost dime in the corners. Here you carry that speed throughout banking and uh, they run mostly the bottom here is you can run about a lane up and we've seen a number of drivers in this division do that and it's actually not a bad place to make a pass if you can pull up alongside someone this track was made for modified racing I i've been coming here since the 80s uh the mid 80s and, and, and this place is electrifying with 600 horsepower and 15 inch tires Definitely stick to the racetrack and even in a night like this where you might have a little moisture in the air, a little moisture on the racetrack, all of that rubber will make up for it and they are still flying around New Smyrna Speedway. What's unusual as we get uh, nose to tail here with single file racing up front is that Matt Hirschman in the number 60 is your point leader coming in. He finished up front last night right behind Ryan Priest, but as Timmy Salamito leads this race, uh, the big thing that we need to know is that Matt Hirschman is mired back in 10th early in this race. Yeah, he's lost three positions from his seventh starting spot as now the lead is up for grabs. Priest is there. Salamito's held it for the first 14 laps. Salamito with an issue uh, with that rear end on that 16 leaking on the opening night put him out of competition. But tonight he finds himself leading the brigade 15 laps into this 76 lap race. Ryan Priest though, right there behind him. The former NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour champion in second. Haven't mentioned it a whole lot tonight, but the field of modifieds that came this week for Speed Week, the World Series started on Monday night with over 30 cars, which is crazy for the first night. Best field of modifieds here at this racetrack during Florida Speed Week since 1993. Ryan Priest, take a look at that. He was able to pull to the back bumper of Timmy Salamito. 
and now falling by the wayside about two, three car lengths behind your leader. So Priest leading Silk. Ryan Priest winning last year's edition of the John Blue at the Third Memorial. Silk has won three of these races, and he's got a pretty good car tonight. And this is a special race. Um, a lot of these drivers knew John Blue at the Third. Um, he was a jokester. He was a guy you didn't want to mess with. Because as Nevin George found out years ago, you know, you're going to get some post-race antics and, and you're going to argue. And maybe even some fisticuffs uh, back with uh, John Blute III back in the day. But he was a serious, dedicated racer to this craft of modified racing. Working around some slower traffic, bottom of the racetrack, John Gerstner in the 70 car. Also had Jeremy Gerstner racing in this event. Emerling still riding right behind the 33 of Ron Silk. That's fourth. Ronnie Williams in that fifth spot. Chuck Hosfeld, the fast time qualifier for the sixth time in the John Blewett, the third memorial race, uh, right behind and outside the top five. Of course, he ended up with a wrecked race car last night. One of the accidents that took place early on saw some tore up equipment in our tour modified feature one night ago. And because of that, John McKennedy, the opening night winner, is not racing tonight and will not race anymore during speed weeks. Uh, Tom Baldwin telling us uh, that that car was just wrecked a little bit too much for them to want to repair here at the racetrack. Uh, he got hit pretty hard last night while running up front. And that opens up the ability for Blewett to use the engine out of the race car for his race car the next couple of nights. Yeah, it'll be nice to see Jimmy Blewett back in competition. And we invited him to be up here in the booth with us because we figured old Jimmy Blewett, Showtime himself, would give us some good commentary. But he's a busy man down there in the infield right now, uh, pitching in with his other team members to take the engine out of the 7 NY and put it in his 179. Nose to tail. You see Priest has now pulled back away from Sill. And Emerling is the car that looks to be on the move. Fourth place competitor, Patrick Emerling. Emerling, nose to tail. You look on the lower left of the screen. You see Salamito has stretched the gap a little bit as Ryan Priest may be stepping it up a notch. We talked about how they may save for a little bit early on. Want to make sure and have brakes, have tires, have the whole car ready to go at the end of the race for a late stage run. And we're one third of the way complete. We've been showing you a lot of the top five, the cars that you've just seen on the screen. Uh, time and time again as Timmy Salamito continues to lead. Just want to mention, you mentioned Hosfeld, sixth, but Craig Lutz having his best run so far of speed weeks in seventh. Kyle Ebersol, second in points, is in the A spot. Tyler Ripkema returns to racing after a big hit on opening night, and uh, he's having a good run as well. Uh, you see Matt Hirschman right there, and our scoring is shuffled just a little bit. Uh, Danny Bone in that 10th spot. Now Ripkema back to 11. Danny Bone talked about him during the starting lineup. He has started 20th the first two nights the World Series, and he's finished in the top 10 both nights. He just needs a little better qualifying effort tonight. He did. He made it up into the top 12 in qualifications, got himself a decent starting spot, and we'll see if that pays off by the end of this race. Outside the top 10, Tommy Catalano making his first start this week in modified competition in 11th. He was the most popular driver in the Race of Champions Trail one year ago. Emerling still looking to the inside of Silk, but can't get up alongside. Jimmy Zacharias, another ROC guy in 12th. Eric Goodale on the brand new Spafco machine in 13th. Ripkema now back to 14th. And Calvin Carroll, last year's Rookie of the Year on the Modified Tour in 15th. So look at your top 15. Austin Pickens running in the 16th position. Mike Willis Jr., 17th. Jeff Gallup. And Timmy Catalano and Nikki Carroll rounding out the top 20. Salamito, what a big win this would be for him. And remember, he usually runs for, for Flamingo Motorsports on the tour, but this is a family-owned car. Here's Ebersol in the 5. Hirschman in the 60. Hirschman leading the points, and Ebersol is second. Yeah, and Hirschman picks up the position. It's a tight point battle at the top. Hirschman, two top five runs for the number 60 car. The point battle at the top, 144 points for your point leader, and the next two come in with 141. So in a three-way battle right now, of course, this night three of five for the Tour Modifieds as the field slows on the front straightaway. Yellow flag waving, and it's for Carroll in the 25, the 17-year-old. 
spinning it in the corner. First yellow, 32 laps in, nearly halfway. I like what Carroll is doing, uh, coming to the tour, getting a lot of experience. It was a great year for him last year in terms, in terms of, of learning the ropes of modified racing. What a better way to get more and more experience than coming down here and competing for five straight nights in Florida. Definitely getting some experience here, and we see a lot of that in many of our divisions where the younger drivers come down, and we talked about it. It's almost like a mini season. Even though the tour modifieds run a couple less nights, Still, five nights, plenty of chance to get a lot of laps out on the racetrack of experience and work on the race car, fine-tune it for the regular season. And we hope you're enjoying the coverage tonight on Fans Choice TV. I, I keep on looking at the Twitter and uh, checking out to see where people are watching from. There's Tyler Ripkema. What a big hit for him on opening night. Uh, we thought, and they thought initially, that they would not be back in competition. But the past two days, this team has worked hard on this race car just to get it back here tonight. Working on the left rear of that race car now, and he did have heavy, heavy impact with the front end of that race car. Uh, we obviously thought needing a front clip or obviously a lot of work to get that car straightened back out. You can see a spring rubber going in that left rear, and Ripcoma won uh, a race here last year at New Smyrna Speedway, and then actually won a race on the RC Tour last year at Lancaster. So this is a car we didn't notice whenever the yellow first came out. The 23 stopped up against the outside retaining wall. Jimmy DeGracia started in the final spot in this race. I want to invite you to uh, converse with us on Twitter. Uh, make sure you use the hashtag NSS World Series. Let's go down to Rob Blount. Yeah, thanks, Bob. I heard you guys talking about Matt Hirschman before and how it seemed a little bit uncharacteristic that he was running back over in the 10th position. You know, but I, I've seen Matt Hirschman race a lot of races, as I know you have as well, Bob. I think this is pretty much typical Matt Hirschman. It's a longer race than we had last night. Matt likes to save his tires, really run mid-pack until he needs to down near the end of the race. I went over and asked one of his PD Motorsports crew guys if this is just typical Matt Hirschman. They just smiled and pretty much said that that's what it is. <laughs> if you notice, he picked up two more positions right before that caution came out. Now he's uh, up to eight. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. We like to call him Matty Ice because he's cool as ice until that car needs to get on fire. And and uh, I, I know you love these modifieds and you're learning more and more. But Matt Hirschman is a guy, especially in long distance races, that just comes on late. You can see he's on top of the point brigade here. Three markers over Kyle Ebersol and Patrick Emerling in a tie for second. Goodale, who hasn't been extremely fast this week to this point. Fourth in the standings, Danny Bone. Two good runs in races, as we mentioned, coming from deep in each starting lineup, rounding out the top five. And I think the key here is Ryan Priest. And can he come back from that misfortune on night number one for the Modifieds here at New Smyrna? It's going to take some mulligans for some of those other people. For more on Ryan Priest, let's go down to Rob Blount. Rob? Th thanks, Bob. I was taking a look at their lap times, and they're pretty much running the same lap times, Ryan Priest and Timmy Salamito, that is. Hanging out and saving their stuff there. I went over and asked one of Ryan Priest's crew guys, how long do you wait if this thing was to go green to the end? And they said, they don't really know. It's all in Ryan's head. And by the way, that was Tyler Ripkema pulling by Rob to get off a of pit road. So a little bit loud down there with these big old high horsepower engines. Uh, keep on mentioning social media. Uh, we got people from Rhode Island, New York, Connecticut watching here tonight. Roanoke, Virginia. You got a lot of Southern modified racing fans as well. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I love seeing people watch. I would know this if we Twitter, but he's still Twitterless. I get my updates on <laughs> Facebook, and I have a lot of people from the Midwest, of course, from back at home in Ohio, where I was a native watching. I've been sharing every night. Make sure and tune in. There's nothing else to do in Ohio at this time of the year. And of course, look at all the uh, photos and other coverage on Speed51.com. Great opportunity for Ryan Priest side by side with Timmy Salamito as they rocket into turn number one. Priest tries to stay alongside outside lane looking good until sideways Salamito. Oh, almost lost it coming out of two. A little bit scary there for Timmy Salamito. Oh, 
that was a tough break for him you could tell not expecting that car to snap loose like it did now he's back to third emerling moves up to the second spot nose to tail heading off into the third corner side by side in turn three emerling on the bottom priest on the outside lane first and second priest could very well be two for two right now if he didn't break the part under the rear end of that race car on opening night for the tour mods on monday dominant last night running in the lead tonight but emerling's had a good race car all week everybody knew that ryan priest with this brand new car would be the team to beat down here uh, just one month ago this car was a bare chassis but ryan works on these cars himself and that's what makes him special he is a guy that comes from the old school even though he's young he, he forged himself out of the old school mentality and that's what we love about him he is a true modified racer there you see the 22 of Hosfeld who set fast time earlier tonight he's moved his way up to fourth second fast qualifier Hirschman's moved his way up to fifth the fastest two from qualifications this afternoon they are methodically working their way to the front Ironically, I said methodically, methodically. <laughs> yes, you did. I was going to let you slide on that one. <laughs> there is Ronnie Williams uh, in the number two. You can see him sliding back just a little bit. Uh, it happens out here. He's learning. You never know. Maybe the tire pressure is uh, uh, not allowing that car to handle the way it once did. But I think Rob was right, and he hit the nail on the head. Matt Hirschman is a stealth bomber. He comes on strong late and now trying to pick up another spot riding in fourth right behind Timmy Salamito, your early race leader. Salamito, Hirschman, nose to tail. It was just a tough restart for Salamito losing a couple of spots, but has seemed to get back up to speed, though he's losing sight of the leaders right now. This two-car pack pulling away. There's still a long way to go. Just past the halfway point, we still have 36 laps to go. There is Bone in the number 17. And Catalano actually having a very good run. The kid's got so much talent. Won in a bunch of different divisions in upstate New York last year. Uh, so right now, Catalano moving through the field. He's already up to seventh in the 54 car. Noticeable here, three-time winner. Silk has faded in that 33 car. Was up in the top three for the, for the early stages, but has really kind of dropped off here a bit after this restart i talked to him a little bit yesterday here at the racetrack and he said you know what this was an opportunity that presented itself just a couple of weeks ago and, and they're really struggling to find the handles on this race car emerling continues to stalk priest emerling looking better than he has ever before here at new smyrna speedway he's never won a race here at this track in 29 prior starts He's been a top five contender, but just hasn't been able to close the deal. Tonight could be the night. There you see Lutz making a move to the inside of Hosfeld, and Catalano tries to come along. Hosfeld, even though he's fast time qualifier, not really that fast during this race. The former Race of Champions Modified Series champion. Sliding back just a little bit. Here comes Catalano to his inside. Hosfeld already back to sixth. And now being threatened for that spot by the beautiful number 54. Field slowing as they go through one and two for the race's second yellow flag. I see you got a car, Austin Pickens, in the 63. Uh, that's an LFR machine, and he's up against the wall down in the fourth corner. Slows the pace past the halfway mark, down to 32 laps remaining. Lutz now being scored in fifth. Uh, he is really starting to pour it on here. Had some bad luck the first couple of nights. A, a broken tie rod on the initial evening here. But finished second to the driver of the number 46 at Bronson Speedway this weekend. Let's start at 12. So he's been one of the big movers in this race, picking up seven spots as you see pit stops taking place. The Carrolls on pit road. There is Austin Pickens' machine. Not exactly sure how much damage he has to it. Almost looks like he might have just barely tapped the wall up there with that left rear Nerf bar. 
first I saw the helmet being worn down there, I thought the driver had climbed <laughs> out and had a safety vest on, but one of the safety crew members trying to stay safe. He's like Superman. He got out of the car, put safety vest on because yes. he, he knew other cars were coming by. <laughs> Austin Pickens <laughs> is still inside that race car, but I did think the same thing myself. New Smyrna Speedway tow truck has been busy at work this week. Not as much last night other than this tour modified feature one night ago. Everything else was pretty clean and it was just the opening start. In the first couple of laps that the tour mods had problems last night. Tonight it's been just a couple of solo spins bringing out the two yellow flags in this race with 32 laps to go. 44 complete pickings. We need the assistance of the truck back to the infield. We have two more features coming up after intermission tonight when this one ends we've got the florida mods running a 35 lapper as well as the pro late models ryan priest still leading 44 laps into this one as austin pickens we try to clean up the mess down there in turn number four are rolling around the bottom of the racetrack under yellow it will be about go time here shortly. As you see, the field will double up as the crew continues to work down to the corner. Emerling's going to have his best opportunity right here to take the lead. Ryan Priest chooses the outside groove, trying to win his eighth race during World Series action down here. Patrick Emerling trying to win for the first time. There's Timmy Salamito. He slid back out of the lead and is now running in third. Also, uh, never a win down here. He competed full-time last year in that online racing school, number 16. Matt Hirschman is certainly a pro down here. He's a nine-time Race of Champions Modified Series champion, and he does have a win coming last year here at the World Series. Craig Lutz, though, trying his hand here at the World Series. Of course, no wins to his credit because he has very limited experience here at New Smyrna Speedway, but a well of a run for, a run for the driver out of Long Island. He's had a fast race car this week in practice sessions, has been among the fastest of the race cars, just hasn't had luck in feature racing to finish it off. Chuck Hosfeld has won races down here and, and is a perennial winner on the Race of Champions Modified Trail. He runs in that sixth spot. I'm impressed with Tommy Catalano. Tommy comes down here, getting out of school early this week, flies down here today, didn't get much, too much track time, able to uh, wheel the car here tonight into the top 10. And then there's Bone, Danny Bone in the 17. A new combination started late last year, had some good runs, but really showing some strength during the Florida Speed Weeks action at New Smyrna. And it's been against a very strong field of race cars. The pace truck drops to pit road, 44 in. 32 to go and back to green. Emerling not able to keep the pace on that inside line like Priest did at the start. That Troyer car out front of this field. But look at the 60. Keep your eye on that black 60 because Matt Hirschman was 10th about 20 laps ago and now already up to third. Yeah, Hirschman and Hosfeld making their way through the field. Hosfeld has just moved into the top five as well. The cream rising to the top when it comes to speeds shown earlier today. Hosfeld told me after opening night, he was very frustrated with that race car. They made a bunch of changes yesterday. He was out of the event early, but they felt like they had a much better race car. Now hoping for good fortune today. But Craig Lutz is so impressive in that 46. Gotta love the black race cars around this racetrack. Yeah, very similar paint schemes on those two as the 46 of Lutz takes. The spot away from Hosfeld, the 46 on the move. There's Bone to the inside of Chuck Hosfeld. Just so just as we were giving some praise mm -hmm. to Chucky, he slips back just a little bit. Bone moving up another spot. Uh, so Chuck Hosfeld struggling a little bit here. Danny Bone to six. Notice it maybe more with the Tormods than any division that runs here. You can get freight trained and lose three or four spots in a real hurry. Look at this. Greg Lutz to the inside of Timmy Salamito in a battle for third. Lutz pulling alongside right behind Hirschman. The battle continues. Third spot up for grabs. Going to be fourth actually at the line. Lutz takes it by inches. Greg Lutz moved into this ride out of the Goodell stables last year. Woody Pitcat had the ride early. Came down here to New Smyrna, ran on the tour, 
Uh, they decided to part ways mid-season, and Craig Lutz has been in that machine ever since. Now we've singled out for the first time in a good while, as you see the 60 of Hirschman running in third. Ahead of him, Priest and Emerling, but this battle is for the third spot. Lower left, your lead duo. Priest just a little bit quicker still than Emerling. And I believe that Matt Hirschman still has time. I, I, I think he can save his stuff. Maybe hopes on another caution because there's quite the gap now between the four cars you see on the screen. Uh, Ryan Priest in the lower left with Patrick Emerling in second. And then about 15, almost 20 car lengths before you get to the guys that you see in the upper right-hand portion of your screen. Matt Hirschman and Craig Lutz. Good view of first and second in the lower left third and fourth in the big box to the right Lutz not really challenging Hirschman I think Hirschman a little bit better at this point than is Lutz but man you get a yellow flag at this point and group those four together and it would be a dog fight maybe for, from a fan standpoint we're needing one more caution I know Ryan Priest doesn't want to see it but it certainly would uh, just bottle things back up and it would be interesting to see with the varying strategies what certain drivers could do there is bone he gets by catalano and now i see cars slowing on the racetrack the yellow flag is indeed back out and there's the yellow flag and the fans in the stands looking on well you mentioned Didn't it we just and, say it <laughs> and ryan priest is saying you guys hush your mouths <laughs> up there we did not need a yellow flag because now he's got emerling he has hirschman he has lutz Three very good race cars there to challenge, but can anyone really beat and pass Ryan Priest at this time? That car has been really fast both nights, just had the bad luck two nights ago. Ron Silk, more misfortune for the driver of the 33, a mm. former NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour champion. And there you see the damage to the left rear quarter panel uh, contact with, uh, I would say, the wall most likely on that 33 car and a lot of smoke coming out from the back of it because that nerf bar was rubbing up against the left rear tire taking the jack handle trying to get some clearance on that left rear but man that's a pretty strong bar to try to move out with the jack handle especially with the bumper bent the way it is right now and and there you see i mean just obvious damage he, he's out of honestly the points title championship chase here um, after some trouble on the opening night. So uh, if, if he got back out there. They're bending the jack handle. Yeah. <laughs> That's not They've a good thing to bent do. It. That's, uh, you already bent the nerf bar. Leave the jack handle alone. You, wanna, you don't want to bend two things in one night. Wow, what a great shot there. Rob Blount, to actually, I, I believe that's Casey LaJoy on the camera. So doing a great job. Uh, they're swapping roles from one race to another with the mods and the super late models. And there sits Ron Silk quietly inside the cockpit of the 33. You can see the line around the tire. Still can see it where the bar was rubbing on it after the spin and wreck. Ron Silk was part of one of the best races I've ever seen here years ago at New Smyrna Speedway in the Richie Evans Memorial. Uh, he and Teddy Christopher, uh, the late Teddy Christopher, battling it out, swapping the lead maybe a dozen times in the latter part of that race. And uh, we certainly miss Teddy down here. Uh, lost his life last year, and uh, his presence and his charisma uh, certainly missed, not only uh, uh, on the track, but certainly off the track as well, because nobody can ever replace TC. He was one of a kind and just a true friend for so many years. Set for a restart. Priest, the leader. Sets the pace outside of row number one. Emerling alongside and Priest hits the go button when they got to the first line, but then he spun his tires, and that allows Emerling to get back alongside. Here we go, side by side in the corner. Emerling takes him a little bit higher than normal. Emerling trying to get to the front spot here, and he's got a whale of a run going into turn number three. Just that slight bobble has done Priest in, at least for the time being. Oh. Here comes Hirschman. You love 600 horsepower and big wide tires. Lots of downforce. Here comes Hirschman. Lutz hasn't given up either. A better run this time around for Ryan Priest. That car is so good. But now Emerling needs to use his rear view mirror a little bit to try to keep the six car at bay. Just give him enough room on the bottom, but not enough to pull alongside. You can keep his momentum held up. That's what Emerling is going to try to do right now with 20 laps remaining. 
Hirschman, don't charge too quick because he knows these two might be getting into it, and they do. Contact from Priest to Emerling. Both of them survived turn number four. Man, you worry about cutting down a tire. That was pretty significant wheel-to-wheel -wheel impact right there between Priest and Emerling. And you can see the lettering on the left rear tire of that 07 washed off from the right front tire of Ryan Priest. Craig Lutz still having a whale of a run in the 46 in fourth. Danny Bone has moved into the top five in the 17. Great run for that car as well, and that's because he qualified well enough. Didn't have to rally from 20th tonight. And you see exactly what Ryan Priest is trying to do. The old outside to in maneuver. Driving it deep into the corner, diamonding it in the center, and trying to get the run up off. But the yellow lights on around the racetrack, and trouble for the man that sits second in the point standings, Kyle Ebersol. Second place run on opening night surprised many folks. Uh, Ebersol's had a good race car this week, but losing power comes to a stop on the back straightaway, and yellow is out. Probably not what Emerling wanted to see because now he's going to have to try to hold off Paris. Man, tough break for Kyle Ebersol, a winner on the NASCAR Wheel and Southern Modified Tour a couple of years ago. And I moved to North Carolina, did a lot of racing down there. This year, he tells me he's going to run a little Race of Champions Modified Series as well as some Modified Tour stuff. Should be a short yellow flag as they'll get Ebersol back to pit road. The strategy on the starting box down in turn four, we could see that last restart. It was Priest who sets the pace in the starting box last time. He decided to go when he got to the first line. He can go anytime in there and he gets to fire first. Well, he went right away, but when he did, then he got the car loose moments later and that allowed Emerling to make the pass. And remember what Emerling did to actually get the lead. He shoved Ryan Priest up the racetrack. Now Priest on the inside. Craig Lutz, by the way, uh, came into this ride midterm last year had some good runs uh, has not won on the wheel of modified tour but has won races at new london waterford speed bowl in the sk modified division so uh, this kid this guy is really Im impressing a lot of people down here during florida speed weeks especially after that second place run at bronson speedway this past weekend you can see the lights flickering trying to get the car refired i'm sure I wonder if he has some sort of an electrical issue on the five. Let's go back to the top two. Uh, we mentioned Emerling shoving Ryan Priest a little bit up the racetrack. Not a dirty maneuver, but just took him a little bit higher than usual. Will Ryan Priest do the same thing to get the lead back? Uh, that's a big question right now. Well, the goal for Emerling will be to get ahead of him and not allow him to do that down in turn one and two. Here we go. Ready to fire. 15 laps to go for the mighty modifies in the John Blue at the third memorial. Well, it worked out okay for Emerling, but it was scary for a moment. Contact was made coming off of four. They bumped wheels, and the six of Priest did a nice job not to spin into the infield. And they slow again as Yellow is back out. I think what we're seeing here, too, is Emerling will certainly not uh, give up that spot easily. And this is disappointing. Tough break on opening night, hit the wall hard. Tyler Ripkema back into the wall hard. I can officially say I believe his speed weeks may be done this time around because uh, an another significant incident with a lot of damage for the driver of the 32. Almost like an instant replay, different spot of the racetrack, but the front of that race car destroyed again, right on the nose. And Ripkema twice now has been on the wrong end of it. A lot of big things expected out of this driver this year. Will contend for the Race of Champions Modified Series Championship this year. As we mentioned, now he surprised us and stole the spotlight on night number two last year and won the modified race down here. Kyle Ebersol is another guy that we expected to challenge for the win after his prowess on the opening two nights of modified competition. But that car, not under power. And you can see the team is still trying to diagnose exactly what went wrong. Well, you saw him take the air cleaner off and made sure they were getting fuel, I'm sure, into the carburetor. And that obviously didn't fix the issue as the 32 Arifkema 
window net down. Going to take the long ride back to the infield for a second time this week. And the red lights are on around the racetrack, so we're under red flag conditions. The teams, the cars, parked up in turns one and two. You see him out surveying the damage and just kind of in disgust. Wave says, go ahead and take her down to the infield. As it's been a rough week for the 32 ride. 17 laps to go. 59 in to the 76 lap. John Blue at the third memorial. It's night number six of our live coverage here on fanschoice.tv. We hope you are enjoying watching this at home. If you've never been down to the World Series here at New Smyrna, it's really made a resurgence, especially with these tour modifieds. Great time to make plans to come down in 2019. Make it a vacation. It's a beautiful area, New Smyrna Beach. And uh, in the Daytona area, just 20 minutes or so away from the big track, Daytona, and so much racing every night here at the half mile. It's a tradition. It's fun. Uh, there's a lot of partying that goes on, a lot of serious racing on the racetrack as well. And you see that good-looking number 71 car for Jimmy Zacharias. He's having a pretty good run here tonight, running in the seventh spot. So Zacharias on opening night actually had trouble with an engine. Uh, they had to change the power plant on that race car. And, and he's a guy that could be a sleeper pick for a victory to pick one off in, in the last couple of nights of racing here for the Modifieds. Uh, he, he's a good shoe. Actually made his NASCAR k and East debut on Sunday here at this racetrack. Tomorrow night will be all four of the divisions you see here tonight, only it will be short sprints to the victory in each of them. 35 lappers, which are the regular lapped races that you run, and those can be really exciting sometimes, <laughs> seeing a driver like Harrison Burton Knight coming from pretty deep in the pack to the lead and to the victory in a short amount of time. And sometimes in a short dash, like a 35 lapper, you'll see that old chrome horn come into play. Uh, that's, a, that's a name that they give the front bumpers on these modifieds here, and uh, sometimes you just need to use one try to get some by somebody jeremy gerstner 75 car stopped in the infield as they adjust tire pressure on the left rear this guy has more personality than anybody else in this field just a true good guy a great family and uh, when he won that southern modified racing series title last year uh, you would have thought he hit the lottery uh, that's how excited he was let's go down to rob blount yeah, thanks, Bob. I'm down here with the, uh, the owner of the 46 car of Craig Lutz, Jeff Goodell. Jeff, your car's been fast all week, but tonight it looks like he's got a good chance to get the finish that you guys might deserve. Uh, what's it like to have, have your cars be this fast? Oh, man. Um, and he's been due for this from since Monday, and uh, we're just, this is nerve-wracking. I'm more nervous watching than I actually was when I ever drove, but uh, he, he deserves a win, and oh, man, this is a nail-biter. We're excited. 16 laps to go. You have Matt Hirschman, Ryan Priest, and Patrick Emerling in front of Craig. Do you think he's got enough time to get up there and get it done? We're racing with the best, but um, we got a good car. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Guys, that's Jeff Goodell, like I said, the owner of the 46 of Craig Lutz. And it was interesting when Jeff stepped out of the ride uh, to allow Woody Piquet to run the car last year, and then Craig Lutz took it over because Jeff was a driver himself, but he said, you know what, I want to get my team on track. I want to get better. They're not going to do that with me behind the wheel. We need a little bit more experience. That's why, why they hired Pit Cat. And now Greg Lutz is doing a great job as well. You know, a lot of times you see the driver. Uh, fans always love to see the driver get in there and work on it himself. He wrecked the race car. Uh, don't know what caused the wreck of the race car, but he's trying to pass some time and probably, in a sense, give himself something to do right now, helping at least get the car ready to load. See how bad the damage is on the 32 of Ripkema. Field getting ready to double up, I would say, in the next lap or so. The leader is Patrick Emmerling, the second place car right there, the six of Ryan Priest, as Emmerling and Priest first and second. Matt Hirschman riding in third out of Mud Lane. In Pennsylvania, his dad is a five-time NASCAR National Modified Champion. There's Jimmy Zacharias, who's running right there with Timmy Salamito. If he's able to get by Salamito, that would be the sixth spot on the racetrack. 
So Priest takes the bottom. Emerling last time had the better start on the outside lane, but it was mainly because the six of Priest and he got together caused the six to get sideways and it cleared the 07 down into turn one. By the way, before we go green here, just want to note Chuck Hosfeld now running outside the top 10. Mike Willis in the top 10. Great run for him. Chuck Hosfeld's been fast qualifying six of the 10. John Blue at the third Memorials just hasn't been able to put it together to get the victory. Ryan Priest running second on this restart, even though he's on the inside. Patrick Emerling had the lane choice as the leader of this race. Priest trying to go back to back in the John Blue at the third Memorial. See if he changes it up a bit. The last two times they both started at the first starting line. All right, here we go. That starting line right upon entrance to turn number four. You'll see the white line across the racetrack and they start maybe just a little bit prior to that. They rub nerf bars just a little bit and side by side equal into the corner, but what a run. Priest drove it in there to get the lead. Just clears the 07 of Emerling. Had Emerling been forward another foot, we could have had a bad crash on the back stretch. But here again comes Hirschman. Here comes Hershey. The 60 car driving into second, even though Emerling not giving up at all. Look out for Matt Hirschman. Now, one two on the racetrack last night's top two finishers Hirschman drove hard into one and two trying to clear the 07 almost ran into the six of priest to do so and now that car is wicked fast Matt Hirschman trying to win here for the second time in his career and he's got a dynamite race car tonight putting some pressure on Ryan Priest 15 to go it'll be 14 laps remaining the lead battle in the big box in the upper right lower left we see Emerling who came to the restart with the lead. He's now trying to hold on to third as Lutz is there. Almost a run right there, but Ryan Priest kind of tucked it down a little bit to prevent that. Great run by both of these drivers and Hirschman trying to win for his crew member, Dennis Duffy, who two days ago here had a mishap in the pits, broke his leg. Here comes Hirschman with inspiration from Duffy trying to go to the front of the field and he does what a move by the 60. Bold move by Hirschman in turn two and that car stuck. He hit the go pedal early, stuck to the bottom, didn't really have to go up the banking trying to take momentum away from Priest. It was that good. Matt Hirschman is so much fun to watch because honestly, he's like a chip off the old block. His old man, Tony Hirschman, one of my favorite drivers growing up as a kid because he drove like that, saved it until he needed it. And because of that, now Matt Hirschman is in the lead. This time, it'll be 10 laps to go. Waning stages of this race now as Hirschman leads with Priest tagging along behind. There's Salamito running in fifth, followed by Catalano. Catalano having a whale of a run here trying to pull to the inside and into the top five. By the way, Jimmy Zacharias has lost a spot. He's back to eighth. And Danny Bone has fallen back a couple of spots after the restart as well, was in fifth, is back to seventh now, but still a good run for the 17 as the battle continues for fifth and sixth. Priest in second to Matt Hirschman. Emerling in that third spot. Lutz continues to ride fourth, and this is fifth. The 16 of Timmy Salamito with the 54 of Catalano in that sixth spot. You saw a glimpse of Danny Bone in the 17. But there's Hirschman all alone up front. Emerling able to make his way by Ryan Priest and Craig Lutz tried to come along as well in the 46. Yeah, Priest's car, I think, is just about to the end stages. It's pretty wore out, I think, at this point. Is Maybe used it up a little bit early tonight. He's faded back to the third spot. Lutz is there. He's going to challenge next. Down to five to go. Six to go, rather. We mentioned that earlier. Uh, we mentioned the fact that Matt Hirschman saving his tires. Ryan Priest not charging full song, but still charging pretty hard in that battle with Emerling to keep the lead. Like you said, those tires um, might have gone away on the six, but this is also a learning tool for the Richie Evans 100 on Friday night here, the biggest race of speed weeks. Of course, in that race, you see fuel added, you see tire changes. It really shakes things up when it comes time for the extra 24 laps than what we see tonight. And we are down to the final four laps this time as Priest just tries to hang on. And right now, that 76 car 
a 46 car of Lutz trying to get by Priest. Priest right now in third, trying to take that final podium spot. The 46 of Craig Lutz having the time of his life and the best run here at New Smyrna Speedway in his career, trying to win the 76 lapper, but he's running out of time. If not for another caution, Lutz does not have a chance to win, but he does have third spot. Made a bold move into turn <laughs> three, used enough brakes that kept him on the bottom, didn't allow Priest back to the inside. I thought he might shoot right up the track with his heart as he went into the third corner, and now he pulls away from Priest. There's the leader, Matt Hirschman, out front, down to the white flag, coming out this time, one to go. Catalano into the top five. How about that for that young driver? Driver? out of upstate New York. A very impressive run for the driver of the 54. But I keep my eyes on Matty Ice. Matt Hirschman, they like to call him big money Matt Hirschman. And tonight he's going to take the checkered flag for the second time in his career in modified racing action at New Smyrna Speedway. He timed it up perfectly tonight and we've talked about him this week being so good on long runs and that type of a driver that saves it as you mentioned till the end and when he needed it and that car was as good as it was all race long compared to the competition the last 25 laps. You just got an education on Matt Hirschman and what he does to win modified races. Not spectacular, not showy at times, but the bottom line is he gets the job done just like his dad, Tony Hirschman, did. Now they all go back to the drawing board for Friday night. Obviously, tomorrow night will count, too. 35 lapper, but the 100, the Richie Evans Memorial Race on Friday night, now the one that they really shoot for. If I'm Matt Hirschman in this team, I don't change the setup in the race car, but I think you're going to see a lot of people see what Matt Hirschman did tonight, and because of that, the complexion of the Richie Evans 100, I believe, is going to change just a little bit with people riding early in the event. And of course, more strategy with pit stops as well, so that will always throw a wrench into it, but he was definitely very good and you know he's a driver and i do a lot of extra homework for the tour mods coming into it because i don't get to see them run but once a year and uh he's just a driver that has so many wins and championships to his credit over the years my goodness good guy good family racing family his brother who spots for kyle bush is spotting for him here tonight uh, tony hirschman jr so let's go down to rob blount with matt hirschman who's about to climb out of the car yeah, Matt Hirschman gets some congratulations from his wife and his son. It's his first win in the John Blue at the third Memorial 76. As we wait on Matt to climb out of his, uh, his really sharp looking black number 60 car for PD Motorsports. Just takes a sip of water. He's exhausted after that late, late race run, Rob. Can't blame him. I mean, he just charged through the field, but that's typical Matt Hirschman style as we wait to get a word from him. He uh, gets the neckband from Hoosier and the hat, gets the congratulations. We'll get Matt to climb on out of the car here. And remember, Rob, he was racing, trying to win for Duffy, his crew member that broke his leg here the other day at New Smyrna Speedway. So this should be an emotional win for Matt Hirschman. Absolutely, Bobby mentioned that last night that they were racing with heavy hearts and their thoughts and uh, or were somewhere else. He said as he continues to take his time to come on out of the car. Here he comes, Matt Hirschman, the winner of the John Blue at the third, 76. Matt, we know that your thoughts were with your crew member who was in the hospital. How much were you using that? For inspiration for this race how much of this drive was for him yeah i mean this whole night uh, first and foremost uh yeah one of my guys got his leg broke here he's watching on fans choice still from uh, halifax uh hopefully he's out uh, tomorrow maybe he can even join us here friday night uh so uh most importantly for that and uh you know this night uh this this interview is going to be about what this race is about uh, John Blue at the third memorial. Uh, never won this race. Uh, always wanted to win this one. Uh, what you probably don't really, or at least is sometimes is you don't realize, is how young John died and what he would have accomplished still in his career, uh, as good as he was. And uh, I was just getting to the point where we were probably going to battle for a lot of wins. So, uh, you know, that uh, being tonight, we've won the Evans race before. Uh, it's great to win this one now. And, uh, you know, the, the week before we came down here to Speed Weeks, uh, 
Uh, we lost three people in modified racing. One is a sticker right here. My good friend uh, Ed McGuire uh, passed away. And uh, then, uh, you know, that same week, uh, uh, from uh, uh, Wall Stadium, Cliff Krause passed away. Also, Bob Weber from Star Speedway passed away all in one week. So I know there's a lot of people up in the Northeast watching tonight. And, uh, you know, some of them probably very close to, to those people. So tonight's uh, for all them guys. Uh, and uh, really, I don't, you know, nothing else matters more than that tonight. Matt Hirschman, your winner of the John Blute III Memorial 76. And usually we call him Matty Ice because... You know, he's cool as ice, and, and, and there is his son down in Victory Lane, and, and that was awesome to see as well. Uh, they travel around together, uh, go to all of Matt's races, and um, that, that emotion that you saw from Matt. Uh, they are very stoic in their person personality, are the Hirschman family, but you could tell how much he cares about the history and the tradition and the people in modified racing. You can tell in the way he climbs out of the car, and the way he handles his interviews, he's he's been in victory lane a few times before, I would say. So has Patrick Emmerling. He's been very victorious over the past couple of seasons, but he comes up just a little bit short tonight, Rob Lau. Patrick Emmerling still seeking that first win here at the New Smyrna Speedway, just one spot short tonight. How much confidence does that give you that you can get it done the next two races? Well, I knew we had it. We unloaded. We had awesome cars all week, and we just been tweaking on them, making them better each night. And, um, you know, last few nights we had awesome cars, too, and we just, um, you know, a lot of the restarts just didn't work out in our favor, but we had a much better car tonight. And, um, you know, this, the strategy, uh, you know, just kind of didn't really play out for us. You know, uh, Matt had a little bit more tire left at the end, and, uh, you know, my guys, I got to give it to them. They did an awesome job just, um, you know, we just put together. Uh, we just, you know, we wound to up our game this year. We came down with a really solid race car. Just, um, you know, towards the top of the charts in every practice, qualifying third every night and, um, you know, in the top three every night. And, um, you know, we have an awesome race car. And, um, you know, we're definitely, um, you know, I really wanted to win down here, but, um, you know, this strategy just didn't really work out for us. I was trying to wear Ryan out, and uh, Matt was back there saving his tires a little bit. And, um, you know, this, um, that last caution just kind of got us. I just got a really bad jump on that. Just had a little bit of wheel spin on that last uh, restart, and then that just, uh, you know, then I just kind of got sh shuffled out by them too. And um, but uh, you know, we we have an awesome race car. We're gonna make it better, and um, I gotta thank everyone involved. So is, uh, you know, we really wanted to win down here. This is our first, I think, our first time coming down in four years, and uh, so you know, we're, we're pretty competitive. We just have to uh, finish. It's Patrick Emerling, second place to Matt Hirschman. Emerling, a good run, but still looking for that first win here in the World Series as uh, uh, the Hirschman team and family uh, still celebrate there in Victory Lane. And uh, you see that sign, by the way, right there, full throttle fall weekend at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, September 21st to 22nd. Uh, that's going to be a fantastic event at the Magic Mile. Fall foliage beginning and a 250-lap race around a mile racetrack for the Tour Type Modifieds. Let's go downstairs with an awesome run for Craig Lutz. He's standing by with Rob Blount. <laughs> As our Bob Donor just said, it's an awesome run for you here tonight, third place. It's been a tough way to start off the week for you, but tonight you finally find yourself on the podium. How good does that feel? It feels awesome. Definitely a confidence booster. Uh, had fast cars, just tough break. First race here. This is my first week here, so uh, first time out. Broke tire rod lap 10, and then uh, yesterday I got put in the fence, passing for second early, so... Uh, it's definitely a redemption to finish third, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the 100 lap here. I started 12th, made it hard to hang with these guys. That, these guys at the end, but uh, I think if I had some more some more laps, I'd, I'd have something. You finished third to a couple of the best in modified racing. What's it going to take to beat them in these next two races? To try to qualify a little better, and then just snug the car up a little bit more. Um, I ran with these guys before. I know I could beat them. It just Hopefully everything just falls right so we could do that. Third place for Craig Lutz. An awesome run, as you said, Bob Dillner. The kid's impressive. Uh, I am uh, definitely a believer in Craig Lutz now. Remember, finished third tonight after starting 12th. He's been good this week. We talked about the speeds he was able to show during practice and qualifying, just never put it together in a feature with some bad luck each night. As the Hirschman family and team celebrates down there, here are the results. Hirschman, Emerling, and Lutz, your top three. Priest faded a little bit, finishes fourth. 
Tommy Catalano. Great run for that ROC modified driver in fifth. Jimmy Salamito led early, finishes six. Danny Bone, another race tonight in the top ten for him. Jimmy Zacharias, Mike Willis Jr., and Chuck Hosfeld. Disappointing that, I'm sure, for the fast qualifier. I don't want to hold on this screen right here for just a second because what's impressive, Joe Scott Nicky from the ROC Modified Series just came in and said, how about those ROC boys? Well, first, second, fifth, eighth, and tenth. They own half the top ten finishers out here in the John Blewett the Third Memorial. Pretty good wheel men, Jeff Gallup, Timmy Catalano, Eric Goodale. Uh, Ronnie Williams and Kyle Trainer completed the top 15 tonight. Calvin Carroll, the last year's Rookie of the Year on the Wheel of Modified Tour, is in the 16th spot. Matt Montaneri, Jeremy Gerstner, John Gerstner. Uh, the Gerstner boys uh, going 18th and 19th, certainly not to their liking. And how about the big hit tonight once again for the second consecutive night of his racing here at New Smyrna for Tyler Ripkema. And tonight's damage could spell an end to the 32 team here this year. Yeah, from him on down, drivers that weren't able to finish the race with some sort of an issue or another here tonight at the World Series. And Kyle Ebersol, 21st, came into this one second in the point standings. We're down to our final two races for this night number six, the Florida Modifieds and the Pro Late Models. All I have to say is have fun. Super late models and my tour type modifieds are done. I'm out of here. I'm gonna we're gonna have a little musical chairs, so to speak. And uh, Casey LaJoy is gonna come up here and join you in the booth, and I'm gonna go down there and man the camera. Uh, so uh, Mark Keeler putting me to work here on Fans Choice TV. We'll be right back.